Hello, operator. Can I speak to my daddy? He's downtown at the office. What's your name? Carol, what's your name? My name is Michael. I'm almost four years old. Can you do this? I have a little boy on the line. What do I do? Now, this first morning, Carol, let's just relax and look around. You have a few questions and make yourself at home. I think first you'd like to know where everything is. The lounge. We have a very nice one, by the way. Where you keep your things and all that. And then when we're through, perhaps you'd like a cup of coffee with a few of the girls on relief period. How about that? Why, oh, fine. This is really all right, isn't it? Of course, there's a certain amount of work that has to be done around here, too. You mean this doesn't go on all morning? <laughs> Not on my job, it doesn't. Of course, that's probably because I have the most important job around here. I can't afford to be away from it for very long. Well, get that, will you? The most important job. How do you like that? Pay no attention to them, Carol. The poor things are just jealous. You can't blame them, really. You see, I'm a long-distance operator. Mr. Henderson is not at the Fielding Hotel in Springfield. No, but he will be at the Thomas House in Portland until 5 o'clock this afternoon. Shall I try to reach him there? At 3 o'clock? I'll call you. You have to be on your toes, you see. And I get a kick out of it, frankly. I'll bet. On your toes? An operator right here on local calls has to be on her toes, Carol. You'll find out. Someone dials operator, they may need help. Mommy! Mommy! Everything's going to be all right, darling. Hello, operator. Give me the fire department, will you please? Oh, surely. I'll connect you right away. Hello, miss. Uh, please, uh, maybe you can help me. I know can I find my son. He's not show up here. Well, have you tried the directory? I know can I find his number because I, I lose my glasses. I'm sorry, sir. I'll connect you with information. A lot of people just have no other way to find things out. You can figure, if they've tried the directory and they call me, they really need help. They're not kidding when they call it information, either. There's a lot of information in those directories, and they're kept right up to date. Talk about being on your toes. You've really got to be on the ball here. You get the name right, find the right number, and do it fast. Well, I always say, what would the telephone company do without us? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's right. I do hope I make out all right. I know I'd love talking to all those people every day. It must be fun. Oh, it is. But seriously, I've never had any training that well, ties in with this sort of thing. That's where we come in. Oh, hello, Miss Collins. Finished your coffee, everybody? Whoops, three minutes. <laughs> we'll see you, Carol. Good Bye, luck, Carol. Thanks. You know, Carol, I'm going to be in charge of your training. You'll find out how to operate a switchboard, and you'll find you'll have something you can do anywhere, anytime for the rest of your life. You'll never forget it, and you'll never find it dull. We can't very well get along without the telephone today, and we can't very well have a telephone without an operator. I guess that's right. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. You're right in there with the operators. Except you're not talking to the public for the first few days, I suppose. So you get the feel of it right from the start. That's right. And when you're ready to begin operating, there's an experienced person with you from then on. I'd sort of hoped she would be. I'll bet there'd be some calls would throw me at first. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hello, operator. Can I speak to my daddy? He's downtown at the office. What's your name? Carol. What's your name? My name is Michael. I'm almost four years old. Can you do this? I have a little boy on the line. What do I do? Suppose you ask him if his mother is home. Well, Michael, I... Oh, they call you Mike for short. Well, Mike, may I please speak to your mommy? She's home, isn't she? Yes, she's home. Mommy! Hello, this is the operator. I just wanted to make sure someone was home. Yes, it was probably accidental. That's quite all right. Thank you, operator. Thank you very much. Michael? I never realized what it takes to put through a simple telephone call. Well, it certainly takes a lot more than operators. Being almost a chief operator myself, I... <laughs> I hate to admit it, but there are a few other people needed down at the telephone company. 
for instance, someone has to keep track of the money you pay to make your call. See them? In the rack there? These come to us from the operators, you see. That's a record of a long-distance call. Oh, excuse me. Thanks. Oh, I just dropped a dollar. I beg your pardon? Around here, you know, that's a dollar. Every one of these means a definite sum of money. And if it should get lost, well, then that's money gone. Goodness, I didn't even notice it. You certainly have to be careful with these tickets, don't you? Well, you catch on quickly. That's why you were sent to us. Because we're just about the most important people here in the telephone company. <laughs> <laughs> Our girls must be accurate and very careful because of the importance of what they handle. First, we must figure out the cost of the call on the ticket. This girl's work must be legible and accurate. Then, all the tickets must be sorted in order for this girl to do her work. She's putting the information from the tickets onto this statement. You've seen this if you've ever paid the family telephone bill, but it's far from complete yet. It has to be added up on this machine and the tax computed. And you do train for this, don't you? Because I haven't learned to operate a calculating machine or anything like that. Oh, my, yes. We train for all these office machines. And wait till you see the rest of them. Isn't that a beauty? We call that Big Charlie. You know what it does? Takes the bill, puts it in the envelope, seals the envelope, and stamps it. It doesn't take it and run over to the post office with it yet, but we're working on that now. <laughs> You'll find these things apply everywhere in the telephone company, from the operators to, well, to the, the girls who keep track of the equipment, the wires, all the poles, the instruments, the cables, where they are placed and what it costs to place them there in terms of materials and men. Can you imagine how many miles of wires and how many hundreds of thousands of poles and instruments and above all, the most important thing, how many people are needed everywhere to make your telephone call possible? To be in close touch with the actual men doing our work and keeping our service going all over the country. We girls have to admit, men have their place in the scheme of things. Why, no matter where we work, we have to depend on men to make it possible for us to do our work. All the engineers, the repair men, right there to keep our switchboards in order, the installers. Why, no matter where a girl is placed in the telephone company, no matter what her department, men play a very important part in her work. Now, suppose, for instance, Carol were to start her first day in the place where her mother pays her bill. The one big Charlie mailed out. Perhaps the best way for us to acquaint you with what we do here is for us to watch this lady who's just coming in. She's stopping, you see, to talk to Miss Larson. Good morning. May I help you? Miss Larson's one of our tellers. Eight ninety out of ten. In our office here, a good many of our customers drop in to pay their telephone bills rather than mailing them to us. That's what she's doing right now. Eight ninety, nine, and one is ten. Thank you, Mrs. Franklin. Miss Larson, you see, handles only the customer's payment. Now, let's watch this gentleman. He's coming over to see Miss Burke. Miss Burke is a service representative. She's here to take care of any telephone matters that a customer might bring up. Such things as moving to a new address, requests for new and additional service, questions about bills, company policies, or anything else. I want to know what to do to transfer my telephone. I'd be glad to take care of moving your telephone for you, Mr. Farrell. As a matter of interest, Miss Burke used to be a teller herself until she was promoted about, uh, oh, six months ago. These girls all do what Miss Burke does, but by telephone. Whatever the customer's problem, when he calls about it, he's referred to the young lady who handles his accounts. She takes care of the matter for him. By the time it reaches this young lady here, she has one of our many typing jobs, the order has been very thoroughly checked. Now it's ready to be typed and sent to the many people involved in moving a customer's service. To the people who assign lines and telephone numbers. To the people who install the service. To the people who change listings in the directory. To the people who connect lines to equipment in the central office. To the information operator who needs the numbers right away. And to the people who prepare bills. So you see, Carol, whatever you and Bob decide to do, you'll find you'll be pretty well trained for it by the time you graduate. <laughs> I think you're in pretty good shape to fill the bill as far as any industry is concerned. Because I've only been able to tell you about one. 
But I think it goes for just about all of them. Well, now I think I'd like a sandwich. Huh.